Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. No, you're not having deja vu. This is the same DIY wedding dress video that I posted last week, but I had to repost now because YouTube is having some technical issues with my last video. So in today's episode of DIY wedding dress, I'll be showing you guys how to create this really pretty wedding dress. If you guys are interested in purchasing the sewing pattern, this dress, or anything else for me, you can go ahead and check the description box for more information. So today is a sew along type of video. So grab your materials and let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start by underlining my pieces and I have a detailed tutorial on how to do this. So you guys can go ahead and pause this video and check that out. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've got all of my pieces underlined here. Um, I love being able to talk about videos more since uh, the majority of my kids are in school. It's been a little, a lot more quiet for me to be able to talk in my videos. So anyway, obviously you hear Captain Crazy in the background. Yeah, see, I got a school. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my pieces underlined. Now, if you are working with like maybe a silk crepe or something that's a little bit more slippy than what I have here, um, you could go ahead and put your pieces together, pin them, and then baste them together. But uh, I don't think I'm going to baste mine together. And I'm using a one-sided, one-sided medium seam allowance as always. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take these over to my ironing table and I'm gonna press them open. Okay, so we're over here at my ironing table and um, I wanted to just film this real quick because I get a lot of questions about these little things. They're just, I made about a scrap muslin and filled it with polyfill. I have a bigger one for bigger curves and then I have one that's, I made more pointy for areas that have like a more sharp kind of curve that need that, uh, point on it. But for this one, I'm going to use my regular one. Okay, so this is the fit of the new one, and yes, we hit the side seam with extra, which is absolutely perfect. Um, so I'm really glad at the way it's turned out. I only have uh, one side fitted on here, just because obviously it's a dress form, so it's symmetrical. Um, I'm really happy with the fit we have now, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with the uh, with the construction of the bodice. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my mesh piece. Uh, insert my mesh piece in. And since my mesh piece does not have a hem to it, I'm going to start it about a centimeter down, a centimeter down from the top. To go ahead and do the same thing on the other side now the reason why i placed it a centimeter um, below is because we still have to put the lining on here and we still have to hem it so when it's hemmed it should fall at the same place as the um the mesh piece and it should kind of go like that Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to quickly um, 
pin the seam allowance back so I can fit this onto the dress form and see how it looks. And I'm also going to go ahead and assemble all of the skirt pieces. So here I am connecting the princess seams of the front. So I'm connecting the side front pieces to the center front pieces. And then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and sew all the back skirt pieces as well. So here I am sewing down the center back seam of my skirt. And then after I sew the center back seam, then I insert the zipper. You guys know I like to insert my zipper using two rows of stitches on each side just to uh, make sure that the zipper does not shift and it really secures the zipper in there just in case the first line of stitches do, do pop. Then I am going to sew down the princess seams of the back of the skirt as well. And I'm just making sure to keep that at a one centimeter seam allowance because it can get away from you when you're trying to sew really quickly. Okay, so I have uh, my front and back skirt sewn. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've pinned them on. I haven't ironed out the seams or anything. I've pinned them on here and they match up nicely. Uh, there's extra in the back, obviously, because I added three centimeters here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, trim this even at one centimeter so that when I go ahead and sew it, all I have to do is sew it at a one centimeter seam allowance. And that's going to make my life a lot easier. Uh, the back fits nice. Um, <laughs> I realized that I forgot to put this, the dip that I did in the last dress, but that's okay because I think this is uh, pretty either way. Um, yeah, so it looks good. I'm going to press out everything. Well, first I'm going to... Uh, make sure that I cut, trim down this to one centimeter. And I'm going to press out all my seams. And then I'm going to uh, put the back together with the, the lace and everything. And then I'm going to sew the side seams. So I'm going to go ahead and press this out. And then I'll be back once I'm done pressing. I decided to do all of the rolled hem areas of the back, you know, the organza piece, before I went ahead and attached the organza to the skirt so i'm just going to go ahead and do at the smallest rolled hem i can this was really irritating to me y'all but the, the longer i did it uh, the better i got at it so all i can say is for this rolled hem you just really need to just practice and i know they do sell a rolled hem foot so i may invest in that since i've been doing a lot of rolled hems lately but anyway i'm going to do the rolled hems and then after that i'm going to go ahead and align my notches here and i'm going to sew the back piece uh the back bodice to the back skirt and i'm going to go ahead and do that at a one seventy year seam allowance after i do that i'm going to go, uh, go ahead and attach the bodice um the front bodice to the front skirt and when you do that you want to make sure that uh when you you're going over the seams that you're letting the seams lie flat so that uh that little illusion piece is nice and clean on the outside okay so i have pressed out everything and now i am going to start to line I'm doing the same way I did the last time. So I'm gonna line them separately, like the back and the front, and then I'm gonna put them together like a puzzle piece. And um, yeah, so how I'm gonna line the, the front, I hope you guys can see how I'm gonna line the back is I'm going to put my back pieces down. And if you guys feel like this is moving really fast, I apologize. I have like 20 hours of footage that I had to fit into a 30 minute video. Um, but you guys can always go to the settings and slow it down if you guys need uh, to um, have it at a little bit of a slower speed or you could just uh, pause it. But, um, I, you know, all the regular steps you hear, this is not really like a beginner's tutorial. I apologize for that. I will uh, come out with some more um beginner friendly tutorials uh pretty soon here for october uh with halloween coming up but uh you know as as far as as now goes uh you know wedding dresses really aren't beginner friendly and i apologize for that but anyway so after i sewed the lining to the top of the skirt i'm going to go ahead and understitch that seam allowance to the lining so that it doesn't flip out and then i'm going to trim that corner there that we got when we uh, sewed the lining and i'm going to flip the lining onto the inside of the garment and sew the lining down to the zipper teeth i hope that makes sense guys um i may do a a dedicated tutorial on that uh, how to you know clean finish a, the zipper with lining uh, let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in seeing that because uh, i know some of my um, more focused videos really don't do as well as 
these videos. Okay, so this is what the back is currently looking like. Excuse my mess, I'm like trying to stick and move. Uh, I'm going to re-sew some new button loops on here because I, I don't like how the, the end is coming off of this one. Um, I had to pinch in a couple of little areas here um, to make it lay flat to the body and I probably have to pinch a little one in there and probably another one on this side. And I'm not worried about that because that's all going to be covered with the lace. The next thing I'm going to do is trim down the side even with the side seam of the back, uh, of the face of the back. And then I think we are good. I'm also gonna go ahead and sew the lining onto the front. I just wanted to see how this back looked and I actually really like the way it's turning out. Now I'm going to line the front of the dress. So I'm just placing the lining and the face of the dress right sides together. And I'm sewing down uh, the middle, the middle part of the dress first. And once I get to where the mesh is I'm just flipping the mesh over so I'm not sewing uh, sewing on the mesh and then I am just putting right side of the lining to the right side of the seam allowance of the face and I'm just sewing down and then I uh, back stitch when I get to the bottom there and then I go on the other side and do the same thing And I didn't show it here for sake of time, but you do want to make sure that you go back and understitch your seam allowance over to your lining at the middle part of the bodice. Now for one of the most important parts, I'm using my little bust pressing mold thing and I'm using a pressing cloth and I have my iron set all the way up to cotton and I'm really pressing and steaming that cup. Uh, of the of the bodice to really shape it to like the shape of a bust and I'm doing that on both sides you guys really want to make sure you're doing this this really does make a difference Okay, so now it is time to join the front of the dress to the back, and this is where it starts to get real complicated, y'all. So you want to have the face of the dress, you want to join that to the face of the back, and then you want to pin all the way up uh, on the illusion panel to the face of the front. Just place pins there. And then when you place it under your machine, you want to start sewing down. And then once you get to where all of your pieces kind of meet, like where there's lining as well, you want to move the lining out of the way. You see how I'm doing this here? So you're moving it out of the way so you're not sewing over the lining. And you want to really make sure that it's tucked in out of the way that you're not catching it in any way. And then you want to just continue down the seam and you do that on both sides. Once the face pieces are connected at the side seams, then you want to go ahead and 
connect the linings at the side seams. So the way I'm doing this is I am putting my lining right sides together with my face at the bodice and I am sewing that seam. Now you see I'm tucking a lot of the dress inside so that I can get all the way down to where my waistline seam is. And then what this does is it encloses the seam allowance of the adjoining seam for the organza to the face. And then once I get to the waistline seam, then I kind of shove everything all, all the way back out, all the way around. And then I attach the face, not the face, I'm sorry. I attach the front lining to the back lining at the side seam. Like I said, it is one hell of a puzzle. But uh, once you do it like this, it clean finishes everything on the inside. Everything is nice and clean. Okay, so now, um, excuse my couch. I'm washing um, my cushions. So I don't want to hear about my couch. I ain't have no cushions on. They're washing. Um, initially, I was going to cut out all the little appliques and place, it, place them onto here. But now I'm liking the sparseness of this. I love this, y'all. I said it earlier. I got it from... Uh, bridalfabrics.com gorgeous lace I don't know but anyway so I am thinking I'm just going to place it on here and then I'm just going to cut around the appliques here that touch the crepe I think that's what I do so this is the front I still need to put this on but, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to work on. And then I will be back once the lace pieces in the back are done. All we have to do at this point is re-sew this, um, re-sew the button loops, add buttons on this side, and do the hem. And for the hem, I'm not using horse hair. Um, I want it to look, be a little bit more soft. So I'm going to just do um, a nice rolled hem with some lace. Um, I have some lace ribbon kind of, um, yeah, I think it's called lace ribbon to finish off the inside really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll be back. Here I am just pinning down the uh, front little belt uh, piece to cover that waistline seam. And I, I already actually have it attached at the side seams for when it was on the dress form. So now I am just going to go ahead and slip stitch all the way uh, top and bottom um, to make sure that it's nice and secure down so it's not flapping all over the place when it's being worn. After I have that secured down, I decided to use that little strip of rhinestones that I got from Joann's and I'm going to go ahead and glue it on with E6000 glue and I am literally gluing every little rhinestone piece and I'm just uh, sticking it on to the belt. I'm trying to center it as much as possible by eye, um, but I actually should have had some kind of guideline to make sure I was doing this straight, but I like to think that my by eye is good enough. so. <laughs> I did it by eye and it took forever, but uh, I actually really like the way it looks. I think it's like subtle glam and I'm like here for that. So um, I did it all the way across the front band and then I also put it a little bit at, on the uh, where the buttons are in the back.
Okay, so now I'm doing some hand finishing work. Um, some of the appliques so needed to be secured down. So I'm doing that flat on the table. And I'm also removing the old butt loose that we put in earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and hand sew in some new ones. And I figure, uh, I figured out that hand sewing them, oh my God, guys, is so much easier and so much more clean looking than sewing them by machine. So I went ahead and hand sewed them down and I did uh, like three or four rows of stitches, hand stitches, uh, to make sure that they're nice and secure. And what I like about the hand sewing is I can get exactly where I need to be rather than um, sewing by machine. It's a little bit harder to control. So make sure that if you guys are doing these button loops, get you a needle and thread and hand sew these babies down. So much easier, so much less of a headache, and it actually sews where you want it to sew. Okay, so now I'm moving on to the other side that we're going to put the buttons on. And I'm going to go ahead and heat seal that edge just to make my life so much easier. And then I'm folding over a little bit and kind of lining that up to see if it lines up. Then I take it to the ironing board and I press that crease in. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew my buttons on. Now, to sew the buttons on, obviously we need buttons. So, so I'm taking extra strips of crepe that I had and I'm covering the buttons and I just have the cover the covering button kit that you get that you just cut a little square, you press it in there, cut the excess off and then put the shank part of the button on and press it down. I really like these uh, covered buttons, but I tell you what, it's a lot easier to cover this crepe than it is to cover the satin. So um, I really enjoyed covering the crepe. Now that I have my buttons, I actually needed five of them, I believe. So I just uh, tested the first one first. And then I took my pins and I pinned right where the button loops are. So it kind of acted like it was closed. Just so when I sew the buttons on, everything is nice and lined up. And once you finish sewing all the buttons on, the dress is actually closed in the back. And then you would just need to take the, uh, take the buttons, you know, take the loops off the buttons to put it back where you dress for it. Okay, so I also decided to add a little bit of the bling on this side of the button loops. I hate these button loops, guys. But that's what I got, and I think I made it work pretty nicely. And then on this side, I'm going to finish all of the appliques. And once I've done that, I'm going to hand understitch down uh, this armhole area because it's still rolling out a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to hand, uh, hand understitch it down. I'm going to try to do it as and visibly as possible I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'll come back when it's time to hem and then we're all done to close the shoulder it's actually really easy all you need to do is put your aganza like up into where it uh, was open at the shoulder and then flip it inside out and sew a line of stitching there at one centimeter and your shoulder is closed okay so I've put her back on the dress form 
and I'm really excited about the way she turned out. I think it looks really good and we're almost done. Um, obviously, it doesn't close here. The bust measurements of the model who's going to be wearing this dress uh, at our style shoot is about an inch smaller than the bust circumference of my dress form. So I took that in here um, just at the back. I didn't alter the front at all and I hope it works out. Um, yeah, so this is the front. Obviously, I just turned her, but she, um, I need to give it a really good press and even out the layers and everything. I'm going to do some tailor's tacks with the seam allowances, and I'll show you that here shortly as well. And then, but the next thing I'm going to do is do the hem. I'm all I actually decided to go ahead and hem this with horsehair, but instead of using the two inch like I usually use, I opted to use half inch horsehair here because I wanted it to look more like a rolled hem, which it actually did turn out looking more like a rolled hem, but it was just a little bit more stiff than I wanted to. So next time I will actually spend the time uh, doing a rolled hem for the for the hem of the dress but nonetheless i think it turned out really well and i'm sewing the rolled hem the same the horse hair the same way we always do it okay so to finish this dress off i actually added flowers on either side of the neckline because i thought that it looked a little bit asymmetrical before and so now it doesn't um and this is the dress all finished thank you guys so much for sticking with me with all four videos of this dress um i really think that i'm glad in my decision to remake this dress especially since i'm using it for a style shoot tomorrow so stay tuned for the little video footage of that and i also wanted to take time out out to thank a couple of my subscribers for going ahead and donating to my channel i really appreciate you guys and to be honest some of these videos would not be possible without you guys so i really really appreciate you guys and i also want to give a special thanks out to ashley montgomery i really appreciate you girl thank you guys so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it check out some of these other videos and i'll see you in my next one